Hey, welcome back, everybody, and, well, good morning. So here's what's super interesting. We have seen the mortgage rates actually start heading in a downward trend after they've been heading up for, like, the longest time, right? Anyway, when we take a look at that, this week's data, and even though, you know, all of the information we are, you know, gleaned from last week to project uh, said, hey, this week is going to be super important. Well, it is. And we've got some reports that are going to come out probably about midweek that are going to affect mortgage rates. So if you're on the fence and you don't like to take that little, you know, uh, Las Vegas, you know, red or black, Eh, you may want to talk about dialing in or locking in your rate. So uh, let's uh, let's kind of continue on. Let's take a look at some of the metrics and some of the comments that are coming out. So when we pop up this screen right here, so uh, as we said, applications were up, mortgage rates are down. Last week, we actually saw some pretty good information. So as you see here, we've got about a little over 1,200 pended homes, we only had about a thousand that actually came on, so we're still drawing down that inventory. Solds are still, you know, moving right along, and in fact, our pendants, because they are dominating where we're at, we should be at about fifteen thousand homes, and well, between twelve and fifteen thousand homes, uh, and we're actually just at and just below six thousand homes. In fact, at the time I took uh, the snapshot, we were right at six. And now we're actually under 6,000 homes. So we're about half the inventory where we should be. Now, what's super important about that? Hey, listen, make sure you like and subscribe. Let us know what questions you have. We answer you in about 30 minutes or less, uh, except for on Sundays. And if you have uh, any specific area that you're looking for, yeah, let us know. All right, moving on. Let's talk a little bit about rate. Rate's going to be super important. Then let's talk about some of the headlines that we're seeing. All right. So Freddie Mac, uh, they're running seven-day averages at uh, 6.88%. Uh, that bobbles around a little bit as we, you know, basically as we kind of continue. So housing data shows positive signs. Again, mortgage apps are up. Anytime, anytime rates come down, that is perfectly normal, right? So the next thing is we're taking a look at pendant sales. Pendant sales are still bobbling along the bottom. That's a given. Uh, we just don't have enough inventory, although the pendant sales you know, continue to tick along faster than what's uh, new coming on market. Also, uh, as you see our ticker there, that is, uh, that is truly a mortgage-backed security ticker. And as you can see, we've uh, come down in rate. We were bonk, bonk. <laughs> right up next to that 7%, but we actually came down a little bit, which is awesome, right? And then of course we have our other chart there that's talking about where the market is, where we're going, and basically what will this week's earning reports have to say? All right, so we talk about a free report. This is for those of you that are looking at, you know, making your projections here in the, in the near future for, you know, purchasing a home. Really, really, you guys should be, uh, and it's free, right? It, it gets emailed to you and it gives you every single week what to expect, uh, things like that. It's a, it's a, um, I'm not a mortgage lender, but naturally because we practice real estate, uh, people always ask us, Hey, you know what a rate's going to do? So it's always best to have that knowledge. And so we do a, a quick report and let people see what's going on. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we get some help from these guys to do that. And uh, again, it's free. Just let us know if you want it. Put it in the comments below if you want to receive that. And well, you'll just be included. Comes out, I believe, every Friday, I think, is when we put that one out. All right, moving on. When we take a look at the five questions you need to be asked when getting quoted mortgage rates, it's a video. There's a calculator that's there. The links are going to be below. Listen, it allows you, the calculator's free. <laughs> You don't have to subscribe. You don't have to log in. You can put in four different scenarios. It runs it down, and it gives you kind of a case-by-case a -case scenario to allow you to, to really decide what is the best option for you. Uh, the five questions, look, yeah, it's an 18-minute video. Why? Because we walk you through the five absolutely critical video or uh, questions you need to ask when getting quoted rates. 
It's absolutely critical or you will make a mistake. You will either be money short at, at escrow, uh, you're going to be payment high uh, unbeknownst to you, uh, or something's going to change. So be very, very careful. All right. Let's get back on the show here. Northwest MLS, let's blow this bad boy up. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about average active price, meaning homes that are currently available on the market and the sold price. So the the year over year and year to date is down just a tad bit, about 3.5% as far as the average price of home that is available today. Uh, it's down, well, basically about 30 some odd uh, thousand dollars or 3.5%. However, the more important number to take a look at is the fact that we are heading in an upward trend still year to date. We're at 8.7 above last year. Same month over month of March, we're up almost 12%. Why is that important? Listen, we are seeing a lot more multiple offers. We have less inventory. We have about 50% less. There's still a massive pent up demand for buyers. Folks that are, there's a massive pent up of buyers. How's that? When we take a look at rate, absolutely. When rate comes down into the mid sixes, the buyers come out, application, mortgage applications go up. Uh, we see a lot more activity. As we get closer to seven, that tends to taper off a little bit. But that doesn't mean that the buyer demand isn't there. And therefore, pricing is super critical. So to see our pricing starting to you know, soften just a tad bit, but we're seeing a bolster of you know, average homes, sold prices going up, that's a very clear indication that we are still heading into a very strong string mar uh, spring market. All right, let's move on. Uh, actual numbers here. We take a look at our actual numbers. You can see that our year to date, our inventory is down 7.4%, but we've added about a thousand more than this time last year or 9.4% homes on market. And as you can see on the month over month, you can see that we're up almost 13% as far as pended sales. Sure, we're down a little bit on the solds, uh, but we're seeing that positive trend. Even on the year to date, we're, we're only 1%. That's like peanuts. That's like, <laughs> that's like nothing. Uh, so we are still ticking along really, really well. What does that mean as far as the spring market? That means that for sellers coming on, you still have a fabulous advantage just keep in mind, the first impression is price. Please keep that in mind. Overpriced homes, and if we went back to the first slide, you would see the number of price reductions, which you should never have. Do not overprice your home. Do not think that you have sentimental equity in your home because that will suffer. You will then be in a negative negotiating position with buyers. Remember, if your home sells within the first seven to 10 days, you're going to get between 100 and 107% of list price. If you miss that mark and you go out to 20 days, you're going to look at 96, maybe 98% of list price. If you miss that mark, you go out to 40 days, you're only going to look at 92 to 93% of list price. So you can see how being on market longer is taking money out of your pocket. Price. It's your first impression. Make sure you understand that because buyers are super smart, just like you are. Just don't include the sentimental equity. <laughs> anyway, moving on. All right. So when we take a look at our next chart here, we talk about new construction. New construction consistently has been absolutely just killing it. Uh, and it has since, oh gosh, since 2020, actually even before that, even though you know, we're down about 215 homes, uh, you know, year over year as far as active homes. But but look, we've actually added more homes. And because we're seeing more pended and more sold happening, even year over year and, uh, you know, year to uh, the same month, we're down about 96 homes. Uh, the however is our pended are still, still kicking it up. And part of the reason that we're seeing less of the pendant is because we're suffering on our new on market for new construction. Is that a bad thing? Um, 
means not necessarily. Uh, you know, builders are still still moving along very well. They're still offering incentives. They and same thing that normal sellers can do. Uh, they're they're still creating. And in fact, uh, we're working on you know four new plots. Uh, right now with, uh, with different sellers and builders to, uh, you know, to bring that, you know, basically to a new project. They're not slowing down. They're being still very aggressive, just not as aggressive on price. Uh, but all things considered, when you take a look at new construction, it's still a fabulous option. And because of the incentives, whether that's in rate or just getting a you know a um, you know closing cost covered to help close that gap. Okay, uh, many times, uh, yes, you're paying a premium on the home still, but you're able to get more advantages than existing construction. All right, moving on. Let's uh, let's hit our next chart here, and this is super hilarious. All right, I had to put my guy who's screaming there because when you deal with tiny little numbers and you you add another number to a tiny little number, it makes it look large. And what's super interesting is that even though we didn't go through the wall of shame and we left the numbers uh, static because some people said, hey, just leave them alone. Okay, fine. Uh, this week, I just left them alone. On the uh, year to date, you can see that we are up all the way across. But on the actual numbers themselves, look, we're talking, you know, 10, 15, nothing significant at all, nothing exciting at all. Why? Because we are again in the top five of the sweet spot markets across the United States. Half, half, three quarters of Washington state, you can see that even including the wall of shame, we have 62 homes that are active for sale. That's peanuts. That's nothing. Okay. Last week, you might have remembered that, you know, when we talked about foreclosures, we had thousands upon thousands of them in 2008 through 2011. Okay. Nationwide, there were 1.6 million, I think, at the peak, 1.3 in our best market, which is considered a super hot market. We still had over 600,000. We're nowhere near that. You know, th those numbers were nationwide. We're nowhere near where we were at. The areas that, considered to be, you know, suspect or in trouble. Uh, Florida, Texas, Tennessee were the top three. Uh, Michigan, uh, uh, Pennsylvania were, were, was part of it. Nowhere near as us. California made the list just because of some of their issues. Listen, when we talk about foreclosures, and even though there's some folks out that are saying, hey, we're in for trouble, okay, in some areas that is probably true, all right? It is the commercial lending the commercial refinances, because we have $1.3 trillion worth of commercial mortgages being refinanced this year, okay? Same thing next year. Those are the ones that are going to have issues. Why? Because many of them, because of rate, are going to have a hard time qualifying, which means that they will default, which will affect the banks. Then, by proxy, kind of, sort of, maybe, that will affect residential lending because there will be fewer banks able to lend Monday because money for homes because of liquidity, not because mortgage values are falling, okay? In fact, that will actually, unfortunately, have a negative impact and raise rates, potentially, if banks get a little greedy and want a little bit more profit, okay? Just saying. All right, so remember to like, subscribe, and share when you are looking for awesome information because, well, it is awesome, right? And if you have any questions, definitely reach out to us. In the meantime, have an absolutely beautiful day. Enjoy your uh, morning hot beverage. Mine happens to be coffee. In the meantime, I'll see you guys on the next video. Have a great day. Take care.